Hello and welcome everybody to yet another MotorOne.com and Inside EV's Test Car Happy Hour. Uh, I am your erstwhile editor-in-chief, Seth Mearsma. Today we've got Brett T. Evans and Brandon Turkis on for what I expect to be a really, really fun uh, uh, podcast. We're talking all things BMW today, you guys. So um, by all means, I want to have as many questions and comments as possible because what we're going to do today is entirely opinion based right so i'm just going to put that out there this is not this is these are not our final declarations these are not overly serious rankings but we thought it would be really fun um, to do a kind of a draft right with the bmw brand i've been in a ton of bmws lately i think i had like 3 bmw loans in a row brandon i know you were in that yeah. competition recently and yeah i've kind of, i've kind of just booked everyone in bmw <laughs> reason and it just worked out that like the pe the fleet people that responded to me were all the bmw ones yeah so it's been a bit of a bmw fest around it, here it, it's kind of fun honestly like i remember doing this right after i came back to motor one you had me in a bunch of ford and and lincoln products and it actually is kind of an interesting way to like get a like thumb on the pulse of what the brand is working on because you're almost always getting stuff that's new or recently updated and some of the products that the brand continues considers to be the most important right now. Um, so, and I know Jeff Perez can be here, but Jeff has also had a, had a string of BMWs too. So what we're going to do is draft style in a predetermined order that I just generated a few minutes ago. We're each going to go and we're going to pick our favorite BMW that's currently on sale in the lineup in the U S uh, uh, North America. So sorry to you European fans. We're not going to be able to get any of those exotic uh, pieces of forbidden fruit should they exist. Um, once a car is selected, it obviously can't be selected by somebody else. We're going to do three rounds of that. And then we're going to go through and do a round of our least favorite, right? We're going to be, we're going to be po thinking positively here that there are more great BMWs on sale today than, than ones that we would rather not drive. Um, so at any point where you think that we're crazy, uh, where you think that we're right on, uh, interrupt us and, and ask questions, leave comments. Um, at the end, Kyle will try and put together a final sort of list of the cars that we picked, and then you guys can vote on who did the best and who did the worst job. Make sense? Everybody on board? All right. Um, so let's start. So without further ado, the first pick is going to go to Mr. Brett Evans. I'm number two, and Brandon is is in third place. So Brett, My what's your position? Got? I struggled with this one. I struggled between one very like plebeian vehicle and one um, kind of rad weird one. I'm going to start with a rad one and hope that no one picks the maybe more boring one in the interim. Um, I was just at the BMW dealer a couple of weeks ago uh, buying a new bumper for my car. And there was a BMW 8 Series uh, Alpina B8 Grand Coupe. And it just like looked the absolute business. It had like such a presence. So I'm going to say uh, Alpina B8 Grand Coupe is going to be my uh, my first pick of my favorite BMW currently on sale. Wow. Yeah, that is. So we're talking about something that probably sells in the single digits. Number one. I'm sure. Uh, what's the what's the list price on this on this sucker? Um, like the, they're like 140 or something like that. 130. I'm, 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 I'm guessing, but that sounds about right. Yeah, maybe yeah. even more. Uh, they are they are pricey machines for sure. Let me just. Uh, let's I didn't. I I'm not even, it's not even on. Is is it still on sale? That you might be you might be banished on this one, Brett. You might have oh, you might have shoot. failed right out of the game. Banished on this one. <laughs> Forfeit your Darn pick. It, you're right. You've lost the draft spot. Your fan base That's hates you. I'm going to change it to MA Grand Coupe. Then I'm just going to change it. We're right there. Okay. MA Grand Coupe. Give me an MA Grand Coupe. Um, like so, the, so, the, the V8 looks better, but still, I'm, I'm okay with this. This is a, this it's, is a an, it's an interesting choice because I'm in an M8 regular coupe right now, an M8 competition, and I'm I'm gonna channel uh, Mr. Jeff Perez here. It's really firm. <laughs> I mean, Look at those wheels. Is, they're like 20 is, inch wheels. Yeah, it's it's got it's got huge wheels. I'm pretty sure they're run flat tires. Um, it is. It is monstrously fast, yeah. but even in its softest setting, I mean, it is not the GT that I want it to be, that I want a car this quick to be. I don't it know. Is... I, we drove the, uh, the coupe, the two-door from um, New York to uh, North Carolina a couple of years ago, and it was like the one that we fought over. I mean, the, the, 
the other car was a GT500 and a Polestar 1, but the M8 was the one that we wanted to ride in for the longest stretches of road because it was the most comfortable. I don't totally, I mean, it's like firm, but it's not backbreaking. In terms of the cabin, that like that goes a long way. It is a beautiful cabin. I mean, it's it's extremely well appointed. The seats are super comfortable. The the Harman Kardon sound system, I think it's a Harman Kardon, um, sounds fantastic. It's got the it's got great active safety gear. Um, I'm 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 talking purely in terms of ride quality. It's it's just it's stiffer than I would want in something that, like that I would consider against you know uh, uh, an Aston Martin. Like that's really where I kind of view this car as like a big GT. Yeah. Well, I will say so. So Brandon and I had lunch the other day, and he's in that that M8 coupe. And I, I I will just say like I think that there's a strong argument to be made that this is the most beautiful car at the very least in BMW's lineup right now. I think that they're, you know, with their polarizing design language, some are more edgy, um, some are a little bit more mainstream, but I think that the M8 really like strikes a nice balance, looks very aggressive, but without any of the like super, super uh, nostrally grills that, that so many of the cars have right now. So um, I can see the advantage there again. I, you know, it's not like we have any criteria around how many of these you expect we, we would want to sell or we think that people would want to buy or anything like that. So just as a pure play, like love choice, I like it a lot. Um, well, and, and that was kind of the, the whole point of the original flawed B8 choice was uh, I, I, I just saw it at the, sh on the showroom floor and it just like sucked me in, you know, purely yeah. emotional, purely like just based on looks alone in an era when, you know, so many of the cars that like there was an IX there. It looks it's it's cool. It, the interior is beautiful on that thing. There was an XM, which is obviously like very impressive. But this was the one that just kind of like sucked me in. So, you know, again, pure emotion play. Yeah. So we've got a couple of comments here. Um, Sam Wiener said that he drove the X4 R, R, sorry, X4 rear wheel drive, a gorgeous car, drives great. He wanted to buy it, but it was too expensive. And he ended up in a Tesla Model 3 uh, rear wheel drive for about $20,000 less. Those are, those are really interesting comps. I love it when you hear from real people about their actual shopping experience because it never conforms to like what we would put together in a comparison test or very rarely, right? Like people are all over the place in terms of what they like, what the preferences are. So um, buying a, a, a Model 3 instead of an X4 is nothing that we could sort of like guess at. Uh, but, but I, I you know, it, it, it does make a sort, certain kind of sense, I suppose. If you're equally disposed to want to have um, something electric or something more traditional. Um, and then good, good, good afternoon from Michigan. Franz Bell is tuning in from Norway. Glad to have you. Love All right. Glory. I am up. And my draft board is full because I did not have uh, the M8 Grand Coupe on my on my draft board. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to I'm 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 going to pivot here and take what what is number two on my draft board instead of number one, hoping that I'm, it might come back around with the BMW iX. So this is a car that I again I don't know if this is an interesting choice or if this is uh like uh, I don't know if this is one that that you guys are were thinking were, were one of your favorites but drove this car a lot last year at Star Wars I've not had it here at home yet and I was just like completely struck by the experience of driving the thing and the sort of luscious interior um, that the iX that we had uh, uh, lavished on us I guess. So like a lot of you out there, I saw the car. I don't think it's particularly great looking. I also don't think it's horrible looking, if I'm completely honest. Uh, I, think they, I think they chose a very bad one for that lead image. Like those wheels do, that, do it no favors at all. Yeah, but you can dress it up in like, that sort of like garnet color that we had, I thought was pretty, pretty attractive and there are better wheel options for it. It's got the huge grill. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to obviously live with the gigantic grill. But the things that the things that I really loved about this car and made it feel so unique to me were just a posh drive, right? Like the 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 ride quality in the car, I thought was really incredible. A combination in like very sophisticated sort of damping with the really. Um, it, it wasn't quiet. I mean, it can be, but the but the cool ambient sound, the sort of driving noises in the vehicle, just set a vibe whenever you're in the car that I that I really fell in love with. And then, yeah, other than I, my only complaint about the interior was for somebody my my height, the um, thigh bolsters were a little short even when they were extended. So I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was sitting in a seat like a bucket seat as so much as on it. But beyond that, this this is a gorgeous gorgeous interior in this car. Um, interesting choices, 
the um, we're looking at the display now. The, the display itself is um, I, I felt like it was impressive without being overwhelming. Great functionality. The cool little crystal touches, which I liked a little bit better than in, um, for instance, the seven series that I had more recently. Uh, it's just really it doesn't look like anything else in the market. Uh, and I appreciate that. It's I it's a, go ahead, Brett. Oh, no, by all means, go ahead. So I was I was just I, I didn't drive it, but I was I was on a BMW program last week in Munich and our shuttle to the airport um, was was an XM or an IX an IX. I'm sorry. And the fact that it, in black, I think it looks really actually pretty good. Um, it is extremely comfortable. We had four people and bags in there. We still had plenty of room and the driver topped it out on the way to to the airport on the Autobahn. So 155 yeah. miles an hour and in an m60 and it's it's quiet um it it it's comfortable i mean i think this is a great pick i'm i'm a huge fan of the ix i think one of the really great things about this one is i i know a few years ago bmw kind of like did a new um a new marketing tactic where they said you know the the ultimate sports activity vehicle the ultimate supercar the ultimate luxury car blah 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 and then, like, at the very end, they tied it all together and said the ultimate driving machine. Mm -hmm. And kind of, like, taking that that like that like slogan that's been around for decades and turning it a little bit and, like, being like, driving can be lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be twisty roads or racetracks. Like, driving can just be cruising down the Autobahn at 155 miles an hour in the rear seat of, an, of a vehicle where the seats are, like, tilted in toward each other a little bit because it's, like, a little bit of a lounge. Like, yeah. Like, and I think that, that this is a great, a great example of that. Like, of course, you know, being like a kind of an old school BMW guy, I do wish it was just like a little bit more dynamic or whatever overtly, sure. but like, just as like a, a, as a purely comfortable, fantastic lounge, I, I don't really think there's anything you can say bad about the, uh, about the IX, at least when you're sitting inside. Yeah. I mean, I co-sign all of that. I think, I think it's like a first rate luxury experience. It's fast. It doesn't push you to want to drive it quickly around corners or anything like that, but that's that's clearly not what was intended to. So I just think it's a really original kind of uh, yes. thought from BMW right now to do this. And like increasingly, there are obviously competitors here uh, from you know Mercedes and Audi, but they're not they're they're not all like sort of squarely aligned, right? They're yeah. this is this is less of a traditional SUV experience despite the form factor, and and I just think it's cool, honestly. Well, I'm I'm going to be controversial. I think of, of all the competitors, this is like the most dialed in and like right yeah. out of the box mm -hmm. of, of all of those. And I'm including, you know, EQS SUV and, and in QA e-tron. I, this is the one that I would have. Um, it's, it's just everything about it is, is a little bit weird, but a little bit good or a lot good. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. All right, BT you're up, man. Pick, pick number three. Well, mine's going to be attainable. So okay. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to differ from, from you two straight away. Um, so as I mentioned last week, I was in Germany on a BMW program. Um, before that I was in Germany on a Mercedes program and drove a BMW M440i convertible from Munich to Innsbruck and back. Mm -hmm. And I, I did not think a great deal of this before I set out, but it is, I mean, it's, it's a great all around convertible. We, uh did 160 miles an hour on the autobahn um with the roof up it was quiet it was fast it was comfortable uh it was painted matte blue so it looked pretty wild um and yeah it's i i i like i said i didn't have high hopes but it it was it really surprised me in terms of of its overall balance like the ride quality was great i mean obviously the roads are are fantastic over there but um it did everything that we needed it to do really yeah, I like, I, I mean, I like the 4 Series convertible a lot more as the 440 than I do as like a, a, an M, M4, for instance, as we're as we're looking at the coupe now, right? I think that where you're, I, listen, I've always got a soft, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but like, first of all, four place convertibles, like real four place convertibles, I think are cool because they're kind of rare. Um, German convertibles have always been pretty special to me. We talked about a few weeks ago, um, the, the E-Class convertible that I was, that I was in that I think are neat because they, they pay a lot of attention to kind of, uh, um, the air control, like spillover and, and things like that. 
Um, they're almost always outfitted with like really good heated seats and heated steering wheels so that you can drive it in kind of three seasons in a place like Michigan, which I appreciate. So I haven't been in this car, but I, but I can appreciate that as a pick. Yeah. Sure. The, the only real issue that I had with it, and I think this is a broader engineering problem with, with the four series convertible line is that there's this luggage partition in the trunk. And so the only time that I, I was driving with, uh, dearly departed mortar one staffer clint simone um mm. the only time we were able to put the the roof down is when we didn't have our suitcases in the back of the car um otherwise yeah. the only way we could we could put the roof or the only way we could fit our bags in is if we lifted this luggage partition which prevented you from putting the roof down um, so they have that even though it's a folding fabric roof now yes that's very weird yes that's that's exactly what i thought and how big was your you bag know, huh how big was it? Was, it was it's it's a it is a stand it is about as big as an airport check bag or carry on bag can get. Uh -huh. Like it's it's you know it, twenty inch or twenty one inch roller board kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Clint's was about the same size, so we had two of those, and it would not we could not fit it in there. Um, there's, so that that there's was that nothing was less cool than when you're getting in your when you're trying to put the top down on your even even again not an M car but you're like cool reasonably expensive luxury convertible and you can't do it because the bag is just the wheel well, of the bag is touching the well uh, dude we were and we were driving through the Alps too like it was it was you know it felt felt a little bit unromantic to like get out of there and like right. open the trunk and be like why the hell isn't this working and exactly yeah yeah, yeah so. You know that that was my only fault with it. Um, otherwise, it's I, I'm I'm I was genuinely impressed. It sounded fantastic. It it, it it's it's great. It's really yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a little esoteric, but like the uh, I think the convertible. I don't like the way the coupe looks at all. I think the four series coupe is unattractive from every angle. Nothing about it does anything for me. The convertible resolves a lot of those problems, and I think it's yeah. literally just because it has like a belt line it just has a, a solid straight line from nose to tail whereas the coupe kind of looks a little bit mustangy or a little bit infinity in the rear uh -huh. um and this just this looks much that that view right there looks much better resolved because you've got a big grill big a lot of like visual mass up front but then the back is also kind of solid and planted and i really i think the, the convertible solves all of my problems with the uh with like the current four series design language yeah, it still has a little bit of that just got punched in the nose vibe going sure. on with the big grill and the and the you know like slight power bulge up there. But that's actually that's been a BMW thing, especially on on M cars for quite a while. So I can get past it too. Yeah. All right. Good pick. Good pick. None of us are going particularly mainstream, but I think that's that's probably to be expected. So, um, all right, Brett, let's come back around. Pick number two. Where where are you going? So this was my this was my weird one um, that I'm glad none of you picked. Um, I just got out of the i4 M. No, not oh. the i4 M. It was the i4 um, E Drive 40. 40 E Drive yeah. 40, yep. and it was perfect. It was just everything I wanted. Um, my boyfriend drives an E90 328i with a six speed, and it's just like, like quintessential BMW sports sedan. Naturally aspirated inline six, straight speed uh, six speed manual, like rear wheel drive. Very, very simple. And um, this felt as much like that car as any other uh, as any other modern BMW that I've driven. Like, it just was ex extremely composed at speed, felt very good. Um, it was, like, reasonably dynamic and fun to drive on a twisty road. The steering even was okay. Um, everything about it just kind of felt uh, really, like, smooth and linear and predictable. And um, it was it was amazing. I don't know that I would – I don't know that I would do the uh, the – m50 or the base uh 35e but the 40e was just like this perfect incredible balance that i just like loved it was so good to drive and it just felt so much like the bmw that i know and love um where everything was just balanced and easy to approach and and there wasn't any turbo lag that's my other big problem with modern bmws is no matter how good their turbo engines are there's still a little turbo lag and it just doesn't feel that like turbine linear smoothness that i love about you know older bmws and this one had that it just felt like yeah linear smooth perfect i loved it yeah i'm a little surprised i kind of thought i4 might go off the board in the first round so for it to uh, be the, the it, second pick. it was my first round pick and i was banking on yeah. banking on y'all not not kind of overlooking it a little bit so i'm glad that, that i thought about it out. yeah i've only my only uh 
my only hesitation was I haven't actually been in the I-4 yet. Uh, and I know, like, I've heard you guys talk about it a lot and I've really heard nothing but praise for it. We've, we've uh, written a lot of really nice things about this car too. So I'm excited about it. It's also funny, again, like had, having had the string of BMWs, my uh, next door neighbor who's behind me, is always we we share an alley where my uh, my parking spaces are, and he's always checking out the cars and really excited because we just moved in and we have new cars. And he's like, when are you, he's seeing all these BMWs, and he's like, when are you going to get an i four? That's the car that he's the most interested in seeing. He wants an electric car to be next for him, and uh, this is one that they're they're really looking taking a hard look at. So, um, I think it's a great. It was car. it was just I, a really good really good vehicle, and the you saw a little image of it in the in the. Uh, consumer site the cargo space is huge it just really felt like a car that i could very easily live with every single day and not really have any complaints about it even had like a decent like 290 miles of range or something like that it was perfect yeah. i think i think the biggest problem for for the i4 is that and especially in terms of how we covered it is it the drive program for that was attached to ix and mm -hmm. i think ix just sucked all the air out of the room sure. and this kind of skated under the radar um, which, which is a shame because I think it's, it's in a lot of ways more, com more compelling and more and truer to BMW totally. than the IX. Yeah. It feels like, it feels like the natural extension of what BMW has been doing for decades in an electric vehicle, right? Like with all, uh, uh, uh I think, I think our friend, uh, Tom Malogny was, was in there a state of charge a little bit earlier asking uh, why we didn't, you know, we weren't opening it up to older cars with the i3, with all due respect to the i3, I think the i4 is probably a little truer to the mission for BMW. So um, Kyle Perry says he's been seeing a lot of i4 here in the Midwest and it looks great on the road. Kyle, let us know where in the mid, uh, where in the Midwest you are. Uh, I have not I haven't, seen, I haven't seen any on the road at all in, in and around Southeast Michigan. Um, so that's interesting to know. I, I, maybe you're in a particularly BMW heavy market. I can see this car as being what Brandon, to your point about it being a little less hyped, at least on our end, because we saw so much, uh, such a strong response to IX. Um, I can see this being a car that gets sold a lot, like through the dealership walk in, right? Somebody who's coming back, their lease is up or they're looking for the next car, seeing this, having it feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit closer to whatever they're being in, and then understanding that it's electric, but that's, it's also like a, a really nice uh, EV to drive too. Um, so I wonder if that's it, like sort of the quiet, uh, quiet momentum of a car like this, as opposed to one that's really shouty with marketing and a lot of press coverage. Quiet well, momentum. That's, like that's, good... that's like marketing ling lingo. <laughs> and this feels like a good, uh, like natural step up for a, th a three series customer. I mean, like three series is the most, like, I think it's the most leased vehicle in um, Southern California or something like that. Like so there's some metric where, the BMW 3 Series has like the most turnover because so many people come back for a new one every three years. This feels like a really natural step for someone who's doing that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I don't think they're going to be disappointed because it just kind of nails everything that BMW historically does well just in an electric package. And that's the other thing that I loved about it was I had the EQE a couple of weeks ago. Also a great car. I'm not going to besmirch it at all. But the EQE is so obviously an electric car. And this is just under the radar. It's just a great three slash four series vehicle that happens to have an electric motor. Although to Mark Longoria's point, he says the biggest problem for the I4 is the baboons, butt on his nose, first of all, that's, I, I love the language. I have not heard the, I've heard, I've heard lots of ways to denigrate. Beaver's teeth. Beaver's teeth is, <laughs> is the one that I always hear. The, yeah. There are plenty of, plenty of bad ways to talk about the new BMW grill. I have not heard baboon, butt yet I'm not sure that I see it, but I'm not super close. To paint it red, paint it red. There you go. Yeah, there's definitely some baboon butt going on there. <laughs> um, right on. Okay, cool. So it's. I think we're back. Let's. I forgot to do a recap after round one. Um, so Brett, your first pick was the the M8 Grand Coupe. Um, yep. After a little bit of deliberation, I went with IX. Brandon, you went with the 440 uh, convertible. Sorry, I forget which. Uh, M440i convertible. M440i. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we just got the I-4 uh, from Brett as the first pick of the second round. And now I am going to look at my big board and go, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with another another uh, M-ish car and not a full car. Uh, I'm going to go with the M240i. Uh, because I think that probably in terms of... Uh, Internal combustion BMWs, I think that probably the 2 Series has got my my favorite platform overall right now. 
Um, this is a this is absolutely, you know, kind of a back to basics is the wrong, wrong way to say it. But this is this is he was very close to to BMWs that I've loved in the past. Uh, one series, the old M2. I have not driven the new M2. I think that it's probably fantastic. But I think, you know, we've talked about this already a little bit, right? There's something about the like slightly warmed up performance of the of the middle range of BMW. M cars are fantastic, but it's nice that the price point gets lowered. You still are getting plenty of power, a super compelling in my mind um, driver's car uh, from a ride handling standpoint and a livable package too in the in the uh, two series coupe. Uh, not really for me because I have children, but <laughs> but old me would have would have uh, been been just fine with this car. As a and you can get it in purple, and you can get it in purple. I have not seen it in purple, but oh, so good, so good. Um, yeah, I, I I I love this pick. Um, I think it, what BMW does with its M light cars, like the M440i and the M240i, is really interesting because it I think it has the most in common with the M cars that you know, we, we knew from 10 years ago where they were not quite as, not quite as serious, not quite as firm and, and un- uncompromising. Um, they were, they were just a bit, bit better balanced for everyday life. Um, and I don't think there's any car that better exemplifies that than the M240i. I I really genuinely like this car a lot and I just got out of an M2 a couple weeks ago. So like it's relatively fresh in my mind. And it's still kind of weird looking. I don't know if, if, if there's a... Oh, vacuum, the, 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 propor- the proportions are perfect. The propor- proportions are great. The detailing's a little strange. I would only say that, again, like I think it's more attractive than the M2, um, uh, pure, uh, purely from an aesthetic point of view. Uh, and nothing not to say nothing about the driving at all, but I do think like... I think this is a good looking car. Like, I think this is a car that I would be happy to have in my driveway, even if I don't think it's the most attractive BMW that I've ever seen. So I love the, I love that it kind of has that like traditional, you know, 2002, two series, one series kind of like proportions, but the details are just so bonkers. Like the square fender flares and the like wacky taillights and everything like that. Like it is just such a wacky looking vehicle draped Mm -hmm. over a very traditional form factor, which is, I like, I don't know that I actually like would love to own that, but I just like that. That's how they, that's how they've rendered the two series for the 21st for the second decade of the 21st century. I, I also think like a small car that has a lot of space for large people and really good. I mean, this is a, this is a super comfortable car. It's the kind of car that like I can find a driving, a, a really a perfect driving position almost immediately. Um, there's nothing like over the top, but the seats aren't like super sporty or anything like that, but they, um, it's a really nice balance. I don't know how else better to say it. Like it's got all the stuff that I want to have out of BMW's like current kind of toolkit with, as far as I can remember, none of the stuff that I really dislike or, or makes, makes it feel over the top. It's got, so. it's got iDrive 8. So that, that automatically docks at a point. <laughs> <laughs> the resident iDrive 8 hater has chimed up. Oh, don't worry. I, have, I, I got more coming. So we got, we got Kyle Perry to tell us that he's in Missouri, which is super interesting. Not Again, not where I would have guessed that you might be seeing a lot of I-4s. Um, he said, my partner and I just got a 20, uh, 2017 I-3 for $11,000 after tax, tax incentive. Uh, so I might be experiencing exposure bias, but there are two I-4s with matte paint near me and he can't help but stare. Congrats on the new car, an I-3 for eleven grand. Uh, I don't know anything else about it, but on the surface, that seems uh, phenomenal and always a super fun little car. Uh, Malagny will be, will be stoked. <laughs> That's kind of a, the I3 is such a like awesome used bargain right now. I mean, all electric cars tend to kind of lose some value pretty quickly, but, um, my, my partner was looking at, uh, getting an I3 out of college because he could afford an I3 out of college because they depreciated so hard. Um, yeah. and that's just kind of like a rad, a rad, awesome offbeat choice for a, for a pre-owned vehicle. I think I thought that they had bounced up a little, number one. But yeah, I think Pretty an good. I3, an I3 with the peanut gas tank with the little 1.1 gallon gas tank uh, and range extender is like a really useful car. Like, it's a great size, tons of interior space, uh, excellent economy, no matter how you choose to drive it. And you have the backup if you need it of the range extender, which is kind of good. So um, right on. So we are back at where are we at now? I've, now I've lost track because I'm talking back to me. No, no, me. Um, I'm I'm thrilled that this one has not been called out yet because it is just 
the best BMW on sale today, full stop, and that is the M5. The M5. Well, first of all, you didn't pick it first. <laughs> I know. I, I, I wanted to talk about one that I actually drove recently. <laughs> Uh, all right. Why? So you think this is, you literally think this is the best BMW that, that they sell today. M5. Yes. yes. And I say that because I've seen the new five series in person. So, <laughs> um, get it, get, get, get it while you hot. can folks. Get it while yeah. you can. I drove this um, car. It's been ages. I drove this car at the launch in, in Portugal or something like that. And, and we drove it all over the place and drove it on the track. And I remember thinking my, one of my overwhelming impressions was, for, for an all-wheel drive car, it was uh, like a drift machine if you needed it to oh, be. Yeah. It felt just as loose as as you would ever expect it. But also with the kind of, you know, in the back of your mind, you know that it's going to kind of catch your mistakes too when you screw up. So this is a this is a car that gets pulses pounding for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's got the older version of iDrive. It's, it's a V8, so it sounds fantastic. It's got pretty much all the act, modern active safety gear you want. Um, like, like the M440i, I drove this, it's been a minute, but I drove this to, from Detroit to Pittsburgh and back, uh, back in September to attend the uh, Corvette Z06 drive. Um, and I was just, I mean, it was, it was the perfect tool for the job. It is, it, it's spacious. I could have put three more people in there with me and we've all, all been very happy. Um, reasonably efficient. I mean, I was getting like, I want to say like 22 miles for the gallon on the highway um and, and and it looks great i mean it it like bmw styling is 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 inconsistent at best in terms of how how appealing it is but i i love the look of this car i mean it really just it ticks all the boxes for me um i'm, I'm a little bit disappointed the m5 cs isn't around anymore because that was that was this just with more but the the standard competition is man it's it's an absolute riot yeah. Future classic for sure. Like there's, there's no question that this is uh, going to be a car that's in sort of the M Canon and the BMW Canon going forward, especially because of it's like the time of its arrival and, and when it departs uh, whatever replaces it is going to be significantly different. Right. Um, so, so yeah, that, this is a good pick. That's, that's a, that's a sort of a sleeper to make it all the way to uh, pick number six. Um, love it. Definitely a thrill ride. For sure. All right. So we're back to the top of the order. Should we recap round two? We went with, oh, nice. So oh, look at that. <laughs> so we had I4, we had the uh, M240i and then the M5 uh, capping round two. And now we are back to Mr. Brett Evans. Uh, I just, I just want to point out that I didn't realize my, my, um, my camera wasn't mirrored. And so I, I tried writing it backwards the first time. <laughs> And I did really well. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Maybe um, we do this again. We get more sophisticated than the the index card. With yeah, <laughs> you don't like this? I think this is no, great. I do. I actually, I, I think it's charming. But <laughs> um, charming used as a uh, as a pejorative is like where I live my life. <laughs> yeah, so yeah totally. I appreciate that. Um, my final round is going to be uh, maybe a little. I can't decide if it's obvious or out of the left field, but it's going to be the Z4 M40i. Oh really? man, that was my pick. Ah. Oh no! Yeah, stolen. Awesome. Well, I would. I think I was going to go with the base one, but Z, but Z four, uh, nevertheless. Nice. Okay, this is a good yeah, one. I, this has been a hot discussion in the old in the old Motor One dot coms uh, uh, teams chat, right? Well, and quite frankly, this is my pick because Brandon picked the four series. I would probably rather have a four series than a Z4 um, for their, for lots and lots of reasons. But um, I uh, I have to have a convertible in my in my top three stable somewhere. So yep, um, this is gonna be this is gonna be the one that that uh, that takes the cake. Um, yeah, it has been a hot button topic and uh, definitely understandable as to why. Um, it is a pretty device, a pretty expensive car, honestly, like for what it is, you can get a lot of pretty impressive sports cars for the price, but, um, yeah, I just, uh, I really like driving. I really like driving the Z4 period. Um, the power of the 40 I is great. And then just, uh, yeah, having top down BMW convertible, you know, uh, driving experience is just, it's hard to beat. It's a good car. I'm sure I haven't been in the 40i. I just had a couple of weeks ago the base car, the the uh, 30i with the, which is a two liter turbo. It's 255 or 60 horsepower or something like that. Um, my argument for this car was going to be that at that price point, where you're talking about low to mid 50s, at least starting, 
there's no competition, right? There's just, it's, yeah. It's a fantastic, and, and it, it gets a little bit stranger here because you're not, you're certainly not edging. You're not going high enough that you're in, you're in Porsche territory. You're probably into some more interesting AMG competition or, or, you know, Mercedes competition at that point. But there, there just are not a lot of natural predators at the lower end of where Z4 sells, um, which, which makes it unique. And it's still kind of a nice handling sporty luxury car and a convertible too so um yeah i I fully applaud it the thing that does it for me and i i just got out of the m40 i a couple weeks ago um it is it's it's as thrilling as like a non-driving enthusiast would want and i because i and i say that because i think the immediate choice for a driving enthusiast someone that's like i want to i want to agility and feedback and all of these buzzwords is they're going to buy a boxster like there's there's just no question about it. Um, this is this feels like that would to like someone that's like I just want a nice convertible. It's gonna be it's gonna thrill them in in you know without feeling fussy or difficult or uncomfortable or unpleasant in everyday driving. Um, my only complaint with it is I don't like the seats. I think they're some of the worst BMW seats on sale right now. Yeah, I did not. I didn't. I don't remember them being that that like challenging for me. But I was, it was miles on them either. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it's just, it's one of those cases where it's, it feels like it sits a little bit too high and the bottom cushion is a little bit too small, or maybe I just have a fat ass, but, um, yeah, this, I mean, it's just, I, I struggle to get really comfortable in it. The sitting too high thing, I feel like is maybe like a, a, a Z4 DNA deal because mm-hmm. like the Z3, you were sitting on top of that car. Like most of your body was out of the car. My Z4 is, is not a lot more like cosseting and buckety. Um, so I think it might be like, a, I don't know if it's a deliberate thing or if it's just kind of like a nature of, of like a low slung roadster, building a low slung roadster out of parts bin stuff. Um, but yeah. it doesn't, doesn't bother me a ton. I definitely see where you're coming from BT, but it doesn't like kill the vibe for me at all. Kyle is asking uh, Toyota super related to the Z4, right? And, and yes, you are correct. They share a platform. They share a lot. Like there are a lot of things in common, What they don't share critically is a convertible top. So uh, if you, yeah, if, if, if you're looking for a coupe, then, um, then the super becomes extremely relevant, but if you want a convertible and many of us do, especially this time of year, then, then Z4 is the way to go. Um, great pick jealous that I didn't get this one. Um, so we're going to bounce back to me and I'm going in a totally opposite direction since I didn't get my, my bare bones, $52,000 Z4. I'm going to go with a six figure uh luxury limousine in the brand new bmw i7 and full disclosure i i had the 760i uh recently which is really impressive massively complicated i have not driven the i7 yet i believe probably after a lot of conversation and again like like getting the download i believe probably the i7 is the way to go with the 7 series in this one because of what bmw is doing with their electrification Um, Because of the nature of a car like this, where you want it to be absolutely smooth, perfectly damped, quiet, fast in a straight line. Um, It doesn't, I think I talked about this before, like the, the, the initially the um, 760i was, was a little bit of a bummer because every other seven series that I've driven was more fun initially on kind of a winding road, but accepting that that's a a weird thing to want out of this car. Again, I think that the i7 is, um, one of the most technologically advanced cars that I've seen, period. I think sometimes to its own detriment, like we, the, uh, you know, I drive eight, like they're, it's, it's the most, it's the fattest version of everything that you can get in BMW's kind of software. Uh, the user interface can be really complicated. There are a million options when you probably need 12 um, and, and things like that. On the other hand, what else would you expect from a car in this segment, right? Like it's going to get everything thrown at it. It's going to get the massive, crazy, probably way over the top uh, theater display in the back. That's the link- length of the entire cabin um, and a little bit of a party trick, but it's just awesome because you put the screen down and the shades come up and the lights change. And suddenly you're, you, you're having like a true sort of cinema experience in the back of your car. Uh, I have I have a question about that screen. I, I think I figured out what I don't love about it. At least from this photo, it looks like you're sitting in the front row of a movie theater. Like I feel yeah. like you have to like move your head to see yes. different parts of the screen when you're watching a movie. It can, move, it can move forward and back quite a lot. It can tilt 
right? Like, so you can get, you can get an, a, an appropriate viewing angle. I don't know. Like, I don't, you might be right. Like maybe if you're sitting back there and watching, you know, a two and a half hour movie or something, it might get a little tiring, but uh, I don't, I don't think it's quite as bad as you think it is. It's okay. large for as close as you're sitting to it. The, the bigger thing for me is what, the view that you're seeing right now. Like there's no aspect ratio. Like you can stretch it to the entire screen, but then you're just kind of ruining your viewing experience if for, for whatever kind of media you're watching. It makes a ton of sense when you split it in half and, and you two passengers can watch different things or two different things. Um, otherwise, you, get, you other, have this sort of like central setup there too. So um, uh, Jorge... Uh, Cintron says the lucid air is way better than this thing. Um, I mean, that's, that's uh, it's, it's a bit like comparing like a uh, apples to can openers, but sure. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, they compete sort of in the same price class and they're a little, they're, they're the same size and all that. So I don't think it's that far apart, but um, I mean, uh, yeah. so this I, series is a little more of like a, like a full size limp. Like I remember when we had the lucid for our star Wars testing and it was fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful vehicle in so many ways. I do remember the back seat feeling like 25% too small. And I, I mean, bet I hit, I hit my head every time I got in. Before. Like literally every seat in that car, I hit my head getting into it. Yeah, it's low slung. I mean, I think that there's plenty of room for an aft, but it, it maybe feels a little bit more cramped too because it's also a little like the, the seats are really deeply dished. They're they're yeah. kind of deeper buckets I mean, too. The, the so, 7 Series is much more of like a formal luxury sedan. Very like high roof line, squared off in the back. Very very you know kind of like upright so i mean i haven't i haven't driven a seven yet um i ro rode in the back of an i7 last week um and played around with the the screen and all that stuff the amount of tech back there is amazing but i i can't recall having such a luxurious experience in a vehicle that didn't have a rolls royce spirit of ecstasy or a or a bentley you know be on the nose like it it is it is another level of luxury like i you know my back level of luxury um, but I think of a fair amount cheaper for when it, you know, when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you can get it fully electrified is, is admirable. I'm, I was, I was very, very impressed with this. Yeah. The ride quality is, is like you say, really superb. I think rolls is probably a great comp there. Um, obviously you're getting a lot of different stuff and a totally different kind of vibe with the Rolls Royce. But if you're just in it for something that's really quiet and fast um, and it's good to ride in as it is to drive or, or close, like this is, um, yeah, I think BMW is doing that very, very well here. So super impressive. I know that there's been a lot of interest around this vehicle too, uh, out there. I don't, I actually haven't really heard if they're selling well, but I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a I haven't seen, I haven't seen one in the wild yet. I, I, uh, I know, I know, uh, Air France has one in their little La Premier fleet at, at Munich airport. <laughs> I saw one um, in Italy. I was just in Italy last week and I saw somebody driving one. I don't know. I, it wasn't an I-7. I don't. And, and I think that they get another powertrain that we don't get here in North America, but uh, I'm not sure. It was, it was black and it had smaller wheels than I would expect. So, um, but yeah. Uh, all right. Brandon, bring us home. Oh no. <laughs> uh you took mine that was i was going to talk about i7 um i am going to go completely off the wall here and say the x3m competition x3m competition oh man yes okay <laughs> okay <laughs> brett's just just his his eyes are in the back of his skull right now yeah, let's hear the case for this one i i don't know like the X3 is not my favorite BMW like platform right now. And I mean, I'm running out of options here, guys. Like I, you know, we should have done like reverse order or something like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. No. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to base this on things on vehicles that I've driven recently. And I did get out of the X3M a few weeks ago. Um, and you know, it, everyone's going to say it's, it's incredibly uncomfortable. It's incredibly stiff. Um, I, I would love to drive one of these with a little bit more conservative wheel tire package and with without run flat tires. You want the um, snow tires on it. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. I mean, a, anything yeah. but run flats. Right. right. Um, it is. It's it's incredibly stiff, but man, it is. It's fun. It's it's really quick. That straight six sound is fantastic. It's it's far roomier than an M3. Like it is, it is all the reasons that people buy crossovers and buy M cars rolled into one. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I like it. 
Um, yeah, I, I haven't driven this one. I think it's 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 one of these like uh, the Germans are great at this. BMW is great at this forever. Like micro segmentation, right? Like where is is there any possible audience out there for X three is obviously a big volume seller. Uh, for, for BMW, like M cars, uh, make a lot of money for them. Combining those two things to me, doesn't always make a ton of sense. And yet BMW has found an avenue there. So, well, I think yeah, part of the thing, part of the thing that's really good too, is that it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's got M badges on, on, on every, on every side, but it doesn't feel too, it doesn't look too shouty. I mean, you see a, a Macan and you're like, Oh, it's a Porsche. Yeah. This, you, this rolls by and you could just be like, it's just a normal, you know, suburban mom bmw so you just kind of touched on my biggest problem with the x3m is that and if of course this is a draft limited to bmw vehicles and so maybe right. i can have a little more charity but it's hard for me to like the x3m in a world where the the macan exists or even like the quite frankly the glc amg which um, does not I exist just, anymore though that's true you're that's true you're not wrong um i don't know it's just it's a little too stiff oh, for me there's just they do too many, they do, they do, they're trying to do too many things. It just feels a little too like disjointed or stiff or, and I feel that way about the X5M too. It's not limited to the X3M, but you know, to both of your points there, it's fast. It's, it's got lots of power, lots of, you know, fun to drive for sure. And they mint money on these. They just absolutely it, 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 mint it, money it, on every single one they sell. I think talking about power though, like it, it, it doesn't feel nearly as intimidating as an M3. You know the you can you can stretch the legs on this a little bit easier, um, and not feel like you're gonna you know you're gonna get pulled over or something like that. It's it's just it's kind of it's hard to put my finger on, but like this is just accessible in a way that those cars aren't in terms of the way it performs. For sure. All right, so we've we've rounded up. I we we've, we've got to get the total list out there. I'm sure Brett is keeping. <laughs> Brett's got his note card. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna digitize that and we're gonna put it out there so you guys can let us know which which of the top uh, or the favorites you prefer. Lightning round is going to be the worst though. We promised best and worst, so now we're gonna go same order, starting with Mister Evans for uh, your least favorite BMW. And the, the rules that we set into place here are that um, if if your least favorite is uh, the X3M, for instance, that's still on the table. Every everything is back on the board for worst. Although I. I don't know that we're gonna we're gonna have a have a conundrum like that, but I suppose we'll see. Um, haven't driven it, haven't it, haven't done much besides sit in it. I cannot abide the way the XM looks. I hate the fact that it's one of the most expensive cars that they sell, and it's still yeah. slower than an X5M. Yeah, yeah. I I just I don't see the point. It doesn't even get very good fuel economy for being a plug-in hybrid. I do not understand the point of this vehicle in a world where the X5M and the X7 Alpina exist. I don't get it. So that's that's my that's my worst pick. Um, number one, number on, one on my list too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just purely based on on you know I just don't like looking at it. You know I don't like looking at it. I might feel differently. And the fact that they. I've got a TED talk in my head about this car. The fact that they like market it as a successor to the M1 supercar. That is the, Oh yes. my gosh. It drives me crazy. It's just. <sighs> yeah. I think there are any number of ways that BMW can bring this car out and make it splashy and get people excited about it without sort of defiling the idea, making it the second ever actual M model. Uh, I, I, I just, I have, I have a really, really hard time with that. I don't know what they're, and the fact that it's not even like, I even understand a little bit more if they did something outlandish with that. And it was with a, a full Bev, right? Like full, a full EV, sure. because then they're maybe talking about like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to actually give you a peek into the future of like our, our second generation or the next level yeah. of electrification. But this plug-in hybrid, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, in the middle of some weird stuff. It doesn't look amazing. Um, Again, I think you know Jeff drove this one. Jeff really was was a huge fan of the Jeff way that he was in the road. Um, Jeff also has you know some some uh, he's a bit of a fast <laughs> when it comes to styling at some points too. So, I yeah I, I have a hard time fi certainly falling in love with this. And uh, overall, I think it's tough. I, I do want to just say one thing about this car that I that I actually really like in person. So Kyle, go to the wheels on the configurator one more time. The center caps, I think, are like a really interesting and 
I feel bad that the only thing that I really like about the car are its center caps, but so I, I love the part. BMW script. But then underneath the BMW script, there's actually like a little round L relief, which I think is really cool. I think that's like a very interesting way of making BMW identity a little bit more modern. And they just could have exercised that much restraint on the rest of it. And I think I would have loved it. So, so the the one thing that no one has mentioned that this deserves praise for is that black stripe on the door. You can get that in gold and keep the red, and it looks like Iron Man. Like that that part's awesome. Love you it. know, Hyundai Absolutely Hyundai did it. a Kona version of the Iron Man too, Brian uh, Brandon. Do you like that as well? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, I'm laughing hard because, well, first of all, Randy so ugly with the pig emoji. Uh, I think spot on. And then uh, super producer Kyle. Everybody's just like every, Cur- Jeff is getting curb stomped, uh, not being here in the chat. Uh, so <laughs> pointing out that Jeff also loves the Toyota Avalon TRD. Uh, <laughs> so you know what kind of company you're in. Oh my God, the Iron Man Kona. Lord, we're down a rabbit hole. It's not even gold. <laughs> it's not even gold. It's I know it was done for right. Iron Man 2, but it's not even gold. Come on, guys. You're right. You're right. All right. Um, okay, so back to me, least favorite. Brett stole my pick of the XM. Um, so I'm going to go with, with one again. This is this is never fair. So BMW watching, like you, you guys can call me out on this later. Have not driven this car. But just on the just the fact that it exists is mildly insulting to me um, uh, in the spirit of the M brand. The M4 Competition X-Drive Convertible is a car that I feel like missed the mark a little bit. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's, it's glorious. And I love convertibles, right? Love convertibles, love fast cars, but it's an all-wheel drive, hyper-powered BMW convertible uh, that's uh, certainly heavy as all hell. I'm sure it's still quick. Um, Seth, you can get it with the carbon fiber seats, too. So, like... <laughs> It's I, just this, like, this is this is the car for like the person that like if they're at like one of those like do-it-yourself burger bars they just take yeah. every box yes and you exactly. have to respect that give me everything years ago years ago uh brandon i think maybe this was right before you started at motor one we did a a, a thing we got a long-term mustang convertible and the and the conceit of the the loan because we wanted to do something special was like what do you what's a mustang that's the most expensive one you can buy right now right so it was a convertible it was a 10-speed automatic it was a gt like it was everything that you could buy in that car and that's exactly what this is somebody it, it's like you said it's like an ai designed version <laughs> of a of a bmw really so um if it looked great although and again, like I, I honestly think the 440 that we were talking about earlier has it over this in term, in the looks department. Um, maybe it'd get a little bit of love, but I don't think this is a car that needs to exist. Certainly, if I were going to get one, I would get the rear drive version. So, oh, that's 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 your holdback. The problem is the all wheel drive, not the fact that it's an M4 convertible. <laughs> no, I mean, I've always done heavy, like the M3 previous generation or the. Um... E90 M3 convertible was heavy as hell because it had the hard top and all that, you know, like oh, yeah, they've right. always done a convertible yeah. version. This one is just so aggressively over the top with throwing everything at it. Yep. So all right, my, Brandon. my pick for worst BMW and you, you wanted, you wanted more iDrive eight, eight complaining. Here it comes. Every BMW with iDrive eight, all of them, <laughs> all of them are the worst. <laughs> iDrive eight is just screenshot that whole page kyle that's yeah just that's the, 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 the entire page all of them i drive eight is what happens when the engineers rule the roost and you come up with this this just cacophony of tiles and icons yeah. and little things that you have to tip and there's no quick way to sort them so right. you you slide over to this apps page and i don't want my car to ever have an apps page it should not have that they all do but, they, yeah, they all do. And I can't, you know, whatever. But you slide over and it's just this mess of icons and there's no quick way to sort them. So you're you're left as you're traveling down the, the road at 70 miles an hour in a 5,000 pound vehicle, sifting through this list, list of tiny little square inch icons, hoping yeah. to find that what you're looking for. And it's it, so much of it with the stuff that's in there, like, I'm never going to tick this box. I don't know why this is here. I don't know why it says there's a live car thing. I don't need that. Okay. Yeah. I just want to change the ambient light color. That's all <laughs> I want to do. It needs a like clean up desktop button. At the, least, the, right? the great thing. The great <laughs> thing is, is BMW does this every once in a while where they, they push the edge of the envelope just a little bit too far. 
And then in two or three years, there'll be a course correct and it'll be iDrive 8.6 or whatever. Right. And version A. I don't I don't know. Um E Drive 40A. I don't know. But and they'll they'll fix it and it will be fantastic because the thing is the 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 graphics and the response times and the configurability of the gauge cluster, all of these things are really, really good. Um it's just it's the it has software bloat. It is an Android phone. This is why uh, this is why I carry an iPhone. Yeah, it it reminds me. I just went through this exercise because I had a lot of time on a plane. Of you know how like I, I don't know about you guys, Brandon. Yours is probably always organized, but your your phone screen tends to get like you have new apps and you maybe don't categorize them or organize them, and suddenly you're like, why do I have seven pages of apps on my phone? So I went through and did the very satisfying exercise of putting everything in folders that needed to be in a folder and just organizing it. I think you're right. I think that's what iDrive Eight needs, especially in some of the grander. Again, we were talking seven series i seven where you have every possible option and it does seem like there are 80 little apps inside of your, your uh, infotainment screen. And it's almost inexplicable. It's really, really difficult yeah. to find I mean, the one thing that you want. This iDrive eight needed just one person to say no to like three things. And it would have been great. Yeah. And that, that's the thing. It is, it is very close to being good. The, 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 the bones of it, the, the way it responds and the way it looks, no complaints there. I, I love it. It's just, that app screen is just a, it is, it is the Cor Chevy Corvette row of, of buttons, but in software form. Absolutely. Um, E-car, e-books, another one for the, another love for the BMW i3 um, that we didn't vote on because we were only voting on cars that are absolutely, that are, that are on sale right now says old school, but love the BMW i3 might get one. Looks like there's a, there's still some deals to be found. Uh, in used i3. So we highly encourage all of you to, to go out there and let us know uh, how, how you love your i3. Series. Look, at that, <laughs> look at that five series. Yeah. Totally. Um, right on. Okay. So, so the best and the worst BMWs, our BMW draft podcast is in the books. You guys, I think I, I you know, I want to pat ourselves on the back here. I think we did a spectacular job. Uh, I don't know that there's anything huge that was missed. There was no car like good or bad. That was, uh, that, that no one no one complained about the uh the, the car that i forgot exists but the uh two series grand coupe that's a little bit a truly a truly lamentable thing yeah i mean on some of my worst ones i looked i looked at you know like the um like the x4 i, I don't really understand why an x4 needs to needs to be a thing um the 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 suv coupe the coupes suvs are not my favorite segment of all time but that's kind of par for the course these days too um the only other one that i had on my like lower down on my list of ones that i like is just like a just like a standard x5 i still think is a pretty good yeah. it's, it's not an standard exciting x5 place, is great but i think the yeah. x5 is a really like is a it's the right size the size suv that everybody wants drives really really nicely um you can option it up it, option it down it a six really do a anything. six cylinder x5 with the the base wheels is going to be comfortable and spacious and economical yeah. and it looks great and yeah i no notes it's so, another one of those cars that just knows what it is and does it well you know like it just yep. kind of it's it's it fits the brief perfectly which is really nice yep um all right quickly before we wrap we've got uh d e d w pope here says i have an i4 m50 and my only complaints with the i drive 8 have been the narrow screen vertically uh cut some cuts off some of the Android auto menus. I think all of us are he, iPhone users, so he's he's an Android user. He's used to the mess of buttons and things and, <laughs> and stuff. Like the, oh the Android gosh. auto thing is not integration is not working particularly well either. So, um, you know, in the world of things that you can complain about, like the the view of your infotainment system is ultimately pretty small. Hopefully, that your 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 six hundred or six thousand six hundred miles so far have been mostly enjoyable. But yeah, little that's a little thing that you're looking at every day. It's probably a tiny bit annoying every time you look at it, right? And, and yeah. That, that yeah, th of, this yeah. is the thing that Jeff always brings up too, and I think it's it's always a really valid point. Um, if you are relying on you know the third party infotainment stuff, sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. You got what, have to be able to see it. So, um, all right, guys, great success. This I think on this graph, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna try and do more of these. If you guys have any uh, comments about the brand that you would like to see next, we'd love to hear them. I think we're open. Anything that's got a, a large, you know, a full line of vehicles is is up for grabs um, and could be a lot of fun. We're thinking about maybe doing this, you know, once a month or something like that. So thanks so much for joining us. 
Brandon, Brett, thanks for being here. Thanks to Kyle for uh, keeping us moving through the BMW website. And we will see you all next week. Bye, guys.